Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I uh, wanted to get on with this hood for the 4.5, get this back on the car as soon as possible. So uh, I've already primed it in uh, PPG VP2050. I didn't show that because I've previously done a video of priming the other 6.3 hood. So uh, basically same process. I've removed all the sound deadening from the underside. So we're just in the stage of just checking for any little deviations in the bodywork. And so I started to scuff this VP2050, it's been about a week since I did this, so I wanted to make sure everything was fully cured and no shrinkage. And so I'm gonna scuff sand by hand the um, primer with 80 grit. Now that gives me a keyed surface for any filler work that I might have to do. And I've had, I had a dent in this area that I dollied out and a little deviation in this area, but just really thin skims of uh, body filler that's uh, just a really thin skim and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to 80 grit this all down, as I say, just by hand, just to give us a good keyed surface for uh, any filler work that I need to do. So let me get on with that and I'll get back to you once it's all scuffed. Okay, now we've got the uh, whole top thoroughly scuffed sand by hand with just a 80 grit. I didn't use an orbital, just by hand, just to give it a keyed surface. And now I'm going to use uh, a guide coat uh, to tell me the condition of the surface as far as any uh, minor dents or uh, issues there that I can uh, fill and so this will give me an indication where those are so I'm just going to thoroughly guide coat this guy so there's a lot of shadows playing off the trees out here but I'm outside just because it's such a nice day but uh, I'm certainly sure you'll be able to see what I'm doing here so I'm going to use an 80 grit block now uh, with a sticky back paper on what's called a linear block. Um, let me get that for you. Uh, this is an acrylic block with an um, acrylic plate here. So it's dead flat essentially. And it does have some flex because of this spine. Um, and I do have ones with extra slots in it so they flex even more. I'm going to start off with this larger guy. I don't have any bigger than this. Um, and then I've got one about so big for smaller areas. So I'm just going to lightly block the surface to uh, tell me um, the condition. Okay, you have to excuse the light out here. I just prefer to be outside, just a more pleasant day. But you can see a low spot here, here where the uh, the block has skimmed over and missed the uh, guide coat, and then a little block there, little one here, slight low spot. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, maybe a little bit more sand, and that will cut that out. Uh, but we do have one here. And this area here, where we, it's got a little low spot. I was aware of these two, actually. So, um, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So, we've got this low spot. I'm just going to show you in these two spaces, and the rest I'm just going to do off camera. Um, so, we've got a low spot here, 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 and here. So, we're going to pencil these out, okay? I'll blend that into one. And then I'll mark the rest of the hood. So the reason we pencil this out is because I don't want I know that this is all good out here, so we can restrict our filler to this one area. Okay, we're just gonna go past the pencil line, and when we sand we will the pencil line will uh, show itself and then we can restrict our filler. Because you've seen I've seen it and it never seemed to make sense to me, is this body and the whole thing up with filler and uh, having a load more sanding to do. So we know these are our low spots, okay? So we do have to scuff up now these low spots because the filler won't attach properly to guide coat. Uh, so we'll get a little scrap piece of that and make sure that's thoroughly cleaned off. Okay, with those sanded up, those areas now, I've mixed the uh, filler off camera and I used a weigh scale to make sure we get an accurate, consistent mix. 
make sure we're thoroughly mixed up here. Further our edges. Makes it an even transition then you see. That's bad, the shades are a little better now, you can see a little bit more. Uh, so I'm just letting the filler set up here and just waiting for it tack off, ready for me to just do my basic shaping. Okay, I think we have just did a little test here. I think we're ready to start blocking this filler. And I am gonna put a mask on because this stuff's nasty stuff. Hopefully you can still, yeah, I'm sure you can still hear me, all right? I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, we've got a nice feathered line here. Our pencil line is just starting to show. And we've got rid of our low spot. We have a little breakthrough here. And I'll avoid this area. And we're going to reprime again anyway. So, so I brought it back out again uh, because of the sand and dust and everything. So we've got all these areas filled up. I picked up a little area here. Feathered all this out, got all rid of all the uh, um, the guide coat because uh, they were going to prime again because we broke through in a couple of areas to bare metal again. Okay, so we've got to prime. They can't be painted straight over like that. So we'll prime again another couple of coats of VP2050 and that will get cut down 120, 220. Uh, probably 320 and then 500 grit all guide coated in between and uh, then we'll be ready for top coat so let's get it back into the uh, shop for repriming okay that's it all reprimed up again i put another couple of coats of vp 2050 it, you can see it's a little orange peely that's the way the nature of this uh primer but that cuts down really nicely uh and the areas that we hit came out really nice uh, they should block out really nicely now so all I need to do now is uh, block this out up to 500 grit for a, a first coat or top coat and uh, I've 180 this uh, cowling I just cut it down degreased it and use 180 on that put a couple of coats of the primer on that okay guys this is about literally two months since I uh, last shot any video to do with the hood and uh, from the last um, editing I think I was finishing up we had some filler area here filler very thin skin to uh, just even out any imperfection so now this is the second prime of um, uh, VP 2050 the PPG and as I say I'm sticking with the linear blocks these are acrylic blocks and as I said before uh, there's no give in these as far as the surface this way obviously we've got flex to contour uh, but there's no give and so it doesn't tell any any lies essentially it's going to show you any low spots really effectively but that being said you better get your body work right because if there is any high spots this is going to cut through but it will tell you so it gets you, uh, it gives you a real true reading of what the panel's doing. So this is 150 right now, dry sanding, uh, the second coat of primer. And I'm going uh, very, I'm not putting any pressure on this, just this contours to the body. When it gets to this point, uh, this is a, a more of a severe contour. And obviously that's gonna be too much pressure to bend this block here, and you're gonna cut through here. Um, so this block I'm using for the large open areas, keeping long, even strokes, around 30 degrees cut angle. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this area. And for the other, I've got a more flexible 
block that's just essentially more cuts in it that will help me with these tighter areas but then when i get down to here i can transfer the paper over to this and then you're essentially sculpting it really uh, so i'm just going to carry on with this you don't need to see you've got the principles um uh, 150 then we guide code it then we're going to go to 220 i think yeah 220 guide coat 320 guide coat uh, and then we're going to finish off with 600 uh, and that will give us a great base for our plane so i'm just going to get this done and i'll get back to you so for instance where it curves here you know this kind of tighter curve here that's why i'm using a smaller block wrapped on the handle side of the block and again keeping us at um, kind of a 30 45 degree cut i'm trying to do the transition very gently not putting any real pressure on here but just letting the block do the job right out to the edge here not obviously going over because you'll burn through and they're both ways And the shiny spots will tell you uh, that you've got some low areas where you're cutting down to. And if you've got enough build on here, they should all disappear before you break through. And I think if you break through in any like small minor areas, you can spot prime rather than trying to prime the whole thing again. So that's what I'm doing anyway. So. Uh, another advantage of waiting a long time before you even come to this stage is for shrinkage. This PPG uh, VP2050 is minimal shrinkage. They've done, I've seen tests and everything. This stuff does not, sh uh, it does shrink, but nowhere near as much as some other uh, primer, epox epoxy primers. And also, this has been done two months ago, so any shrinking's already been done, so you know. When you uh, sand this down and go through all the grits, you're not going to get any comebacks, uh, any more shrinkage, and your scratches are not going to appear in the paint. Um, so that's another advantage of taking your darn time and uh, not being in a rush. Uh, you can see there's a low spot here that I'm gently working this area to get to the bottom of that. Hopefully uh, we've worked out enough in the previous primer coat that that should disappear no problem we've got a tiny tiny little low spot here that i'm working but i'm not gonna go crazy on because uh, um, I, I don't want to burn through in this surrounding area so i'm just gently working that i'll do the best i can um, in these areas where there's a deep curve i don't have the smaller blocks of these so i am going to cheat a little and where is it so for these areas because i don't have the uh acrylic blocks uh, they make a really small set to get into these really tight areas but i haven't got those yet but i will get those for the uh, 63 project but i'm going to cheat a little bit i'm going to go with the dura block that has some more flexibility to it and has the ability to run with these contours so i don't get any burn through it and then there's an ultra flexible block for these real detailed areas here and I'm sure you'll forgive me for using these, but uh, uh, they do a good job in this sort of area. Uh, but I do want to linear block the top surface so we get as flat a finish as possible. So let me carry on with these guys and I'll show you the next stage. Now we've gone on to, so we've blocked it all out with 150, where we got all our lows out and we sculpted it as, as best we can. So we got a nice smooth finish everywhere with no lows and no breakthroughs. Uh, then we coated it with a guide coat, which is essentially like a very fine black powder that will go into all of the 150 scratches. And now we've moved on to the 220, and basically we're removing the 150 scratches with the 220. And that's all we're doing. We're not really doing any more uh, body shaping. We're just removing those scratches. So as soon as it gets to this point, this gray, stop i mean you keep going you're going to end up blowing through so um, even coat even cut like this very gentle until we've got a nice even gray surface and now we've put a bunch of 220 scratches in which will get guide coated then we'll go to 320 guide coated then we're going to jump to 600 um, 
and uh, block that down and I'll be ready for paint. So uh, I'm going to work this down and we'll, I'll see you when we're at 600. Okay, so uh, we've got that down to 600 now. You've got to allow yourself a few hours to do this because this takes quite a lot of time to um, block it all down and guide code it and block it and guide and block it. And if you do get any breakthroughs, I've got a tiny little breakthrough on this edge here. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. So I just spot primed here with some aerosol basic U-pole primer just to make sure that bare metal is sealed up and um, ready for the paint. Kind of want to get on with this before we lose temperature and it gets too cold outside. So uh, basically take all the precautions you can. I wet all the floor down. Sure, this isn't the ideal environment to uh, uh, do spray and finish and that, but I haven't got a booth and so I'm doing it in here. So do the best you can to mitigate any dust. Uh, I've cleaned this top now about four times. Uh, wax and grease remover a couple of times, keeping the strokes uh, even, not doing this business and wiping contaminants all over it and uh, tacked it down I'll probably give it one one or two more tack rags um, before I start spraying like I say I've wet all the floor down uh, kind of blew myself off as best I can I don't have one of those suits I probably will get one of those um, when it comes to spraying the 63 and take that many more precautions but this is my daily driver and I figured you know what the hell. So it should come out nice. We've spent a lot of time in the prep and uh, so let me get spraying it. I'm going to do a sort of a light coat first, let it kind of orientate and bite and then we'll do a couple of wet coats to finish off. Those of you who want to know the gun, I'm using a, a GTI Pro Lite uh, DeVille bits, 1.3 tip with a TE10 air cap, not HDLP. I want to get as smooth as possible, spraying around 26 psi with a open fan, but then turned down just a smidge. PPS cup, uh, you know the score, so we can change out the liners and uh, throw the liner away when we're done. So let's see how this sprays, shall we? So that's the first coat, like I say light to medium coat, uh, doing the edges first. I've allowed it to flash, uh, it's nearly 20 minutes now since that, you want to make sure all the solvents have escaped. If you go dump another coat on, you risk trapping solvents under and you'll get a pop, and so it's best to leave it. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer, even 25 minutes flash time, um, that can't hurt. It's still open, uh, so it's ready to receive another coat, uh, what I do is just once I've shot, I just get out of here, make sure I don't stir any dust up, because obviously this isn't the most ideal environment, but it's not bad. You get a pretty good uh, finish as long as you take all these little precautions. And 
You can see the sheen's looking really nice, got a nice reflection in the light there, not wavery or anything. Uh, and like I say, it's just the first coat. That um, HTE tip is not an HVLP, it's HTE um, TE10 tip on the Devilbis, puts down a really nice smooth glass finish. And so, also another trick, similar to finishing wood, uh, I use what's called a retarder, and it slows the dry time down to allow the finish to flow out, depending on the weather. It, I tend to use it all the time anyway, it enables to flow out. And in the paint uh, industry for cars, there's uh, slow, medium, and fast reducers. Um, uh, and also extra slow. Uh, this one, I couldn't get the slow, this is a medium, but we're on a fairly cold day today, so this should flow out fine. But ideally, when I come to do my project car, I'm gonna definitely use slow reducer to give it as much time as open to flow out. Get another reflection look here. Yeah, I and mean, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, and here's the cowling. I'm just doing these two for the moment. And now I say, let this real harden and then I can do my back edges and then we're ready for our sound deadening on the other side. And also obviously I wanna reshoot. Uh, these have been shot some time ago now. I've had these in the wings for a long time. I've cut them down with 600, ready for a final fresh coat to pull it into this. The two, uh, <coughs> I bought two uh, quarts of this paint and they were mixed at the same time, so we shouldn't have any color uh, issues. And anyway, this car's my daily runner, and as I was joking my friend Matthew, from the windshield forward, it's gonna look all nice. To the rear, not so nice, but it's okay, it's patina. And this is just a, a good practice run for my major project, and I wanted to take opportunity to show uh, um, doing some painting. And as I say, I'm not a car painter, I'm a finisher, uh, but a lot of the processes and techniques and that are a crossover. There's a lot of parallels. So especially trying to get it as smooth and as flat as possible. Okay, so let's get that second coat on. of uh, all what you saw today on the side I've done all the mounting bolts as well I mounted them on a piece of wood put a little primer on shot those I'm sure they're gonna get scratched a little bit when you bolt them on but I'm not too worried about that so you can't see very well but I touched in the rocker panel and some repair work I did on the underside these aren't bolted on yet but uh, they will be very soon I'm gonna give these a cut and polish um, and uh, they should come up real nice uh, color match is not bad obviously this is a uh, very old paint now and so you can see it's that much fresher but i'm not bothered this is just uh, my little test bed really and um uh, we'll just uh, maybe in years to come i'll freshen the rest of it up but maybe i won't but anyway so i got a little polishing to do and uh repairing uh, the aerial cable and uh, a few other little tiny bits and bobs but then we can get these bolted on and then the hood bolt oh the the hood pad as well needs to be fitted i've got to get one of those thick hood pads that was uh, on the 4535 v8 so what i've been doing here i wasn't going to show you this but i've gone through um 1500 2000 and 3000 on the uh with the da sander but with an interface pad um that gives it some uh softness so it doesn't you no risk for very little risk of burning through an edge and what we got so we got these kind of pads here this is a 1500 stick it um not a stick it a hook pad then we went to 2000 and then this really microfiber micro whatever you call it mesh uh, 3000 uh, so I did that to this fender. I also did it to this lower panel. You know, the color's a bit off, but whatever. I'm going to polish up the rest of the car to make it uh, not look too bad at the back. The roof, obviously, I'm not going to worry about because that 
roof is actually needs completely repainting uh, that's kind of shot that paint but um yeah i've got knocked it down to three thousand whether you can see or not i don't know whether you can see or not get some reflection there but um once then i go through the compounds um 3m compounds with a buffer and that should come out real nice uh, as far as the rotisserie that's coming along well i've got the two ends made uh, part of the attached unit I haven't done this one yet I had a little break from this because I wanted to get the hood finished off um, what I am going to do because I've got a compromised frame at the on the other side you probably saw it a long time ago attaching just to the back it's probably not the best idea so I'm going to rig up some uh, attachments forward of the damaged area and attach it straight so uh, it alleviates any stress or possible um, warping or anything or, or misalignment in that uh, damaged area and then um, apertures door apertures reinforced with a tubular uh, square tube probably three quarter inch square tubing from the hinge points do some crisscrosses so it stops it racking or, or getting out of alignment while I do my welding well, I hope you got something from that video, uh, shooting the uh, hood of the 4.5. Uh, uh, just to be a uh, total disclosure, after that last shot you saw, I saw a few flecks of dust in there and I didn't like, so I actually cut it back again uh, with 600 and give it another, uh, another coat, and it looks great now. Not saying it hasn't got any flecks of dust in it, but uh, they will polish out no problem because I've got plenty of body in there. And uh, as far as that goes, just do the best you can to uh, mitigate that. Um, I wet the floor down again, cleaned the whole shop out and uh, wet it down. It's come out a lot better. Um, but I'll show you once that gets mounted back on the car, along with the hoods. I've just got some cutting and polishing to do. And uh, this has been more like a test bed for the upcoming paint job on the 6.3, which will be some time away. But... Uh, um, because this is my daily driver but why not try and do the best job you can uh, as far as the tools I'm going to talk about that in coming up videos spray guns and all that not to really overthink that kind of stuff really but I, I'll tell you what I feel about those sort of thing uh, I, I'll tell you what I my opinion on the certain guns that I use and also the blocks and things I use the acrylic blocks you don't have to do that but I'm trying to get used to them ready for this project so uh, other than that, there's a few takeaways I would say is it's pretty straightforward work but you've got to be patient. That's the main thing you, you get from doing this kind of work, finishing, painting, all that sort of stuff. you just got to be patient. Don't rush. Uh, if you feel the things aren't right, don't move ahead. Don't just shoot if you're just are getting frustrated. Just take a step back, have a little break from it or come back another day, you know. Um, it can be done in uh, not the most ideal situations if you take all the precautions you possibly can. I mean, I'm a finisher of wood and I've been in wood finishing shops and they have boots and all that stuff and they're not the cleanest anyway. They get kind of sloppy with that. So do the best you can um, uh, for dust mitigation and you'll be good. You'll be fine. So thanks all for watching, guys. Uh, videos have got a little spaced out, I know, but I'm trying my best to get them to you as soon as possible but uh, lots of things to do so i'm sure you'll forgive me all right thanks all for watching guys please put any comments in the comment section please hit like share subscribe and i'll see you in the next one all right cheers Ta -da. i think the main thing don't lend your car to a plonker that's really what you get from this <laughs>